So let's look at um, problem 19, in which we have 19 on page 717. f of x equals x cubed plus x minus 2, and g of x equals negative 2x. We are asked to find f come g of x, and g come f of x. So how do I determine f come g? Well, I have to first write the definition is f of g of x. Then I have to replace g by this quantity. So this is f of negative 2x. And now I look at f. And everywhere I see x, replace it by negative 2x. So I, I will continue here negative 2x but to the third plus negative 2x and minus 2. So then negative 2 to the third is negative 8. x to the third is x to the third. This will not change anything. And this is it. This is f comp g. Any questions on that? So now in order to find g comp f of x, I have to write g of f of x. You don't have to erase it like this, but I'm making a point. Instead of this, I have to write that. So g of x cubed plus x minus 2, which means, and now I'm looking at g. Everywhere I see x in g, I have to replace it by this quantity. So it's negative 2 multiplied by this x to the third plus x minus 2, and I get negative 2x cubed minus 2x plus 4. And again, this is it. Now, um, this, let's say that it, you have a, a, an equation, it's h, and then it's... To decompose. Equation. Yeah. Okay, you cannot decompose this one. No, 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 no. This, not because this one is... Oh, it's you cannot, I mean, you can You can decompose it, but you will not be able to decompose it to these two. But let's say, for example, uh, let's say I have h of x, which is 1 divided by the cube, the cube root of 2x plus 1 minus 4. And we are asked to use two functions, an inner function and an outer function. And there is more than one correct answer for this particular problem. So we need to know which one is going to be the inner and the... Yes. Just imagine that you are asked to evaluate this function for 7. Let's say x equals 7. I will have to evaluate 2 times 7 plus 1 first. After that, I will take the cube root. After that, from this number, I subtract 4. And after that, I divide that number in the sense that 1 over that number. So you have at least four functions to pick from. So one option would be the inner function g of x is, let's say, the cube root of 2x plus 1. This becomes one number now. So then f of x will be 1 divided by x minus 4. Yeah, Right. So in that case, you have uh, h of x equals the square of x plus 4 and plus 2. One option would be to say the inner function for me is the square of x plus 4, and the outer function is x plus 2, because when I'm done and this is one number, it's just x plus 2. There is another option. Uh, can say g of x equals x plus 4. And then f of x, so this is a number now, just one number, and then f of x is the square root of x plus 2. You have several options. There's not one a unique correct answer. Yeah, that mine was the, the last one. Because I wanted to, the number 2, I didn't want to touch it at all. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know, I don't know what else. Okay, so are we okay with chapter 12 then? Changing an exponential function to a logarithmic 
graphing, finding points. The exponential function is defined everywhere. The logarithmic function is not. What is that again? The exponential function is defined everywhere. Domain is only in numbers. But the range is 0 to infinity. Mm -hmm. The inverse function is defined on 0 to infinity, mm -hmm. taking values or range negative infinity to infinity. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I'm asked to solve the equation x log x minus 2 equals 4, what is the base here? Same. Yes. What is the base in ln? Perfect. So then I will have to write that x minus 2 cannot, must be greater than not equal to 0. So x greater than 2. So if this equation does not have a solution that is greater than 2, it will not be accepted as the solution. So in that case, I will, I'm ready now to change it into an exponential equation. How do I change this into an exponential equation? Yes. Equals x minus 2. So this is 10,000, and then plus 2 equals x. So x equals 10,002. Of course, it's a number greater than 2. OK, let's go back now then to uh, chapter 11. In chapter 11, we talked about uh, quadratic functions. You should definitely review and redo all tests. All tests are posted. All solutions are posted. I would redo all of them three times and check the answer not look take the test check the answer and say oh I have to review such and such okay so I would like you to write down when I'm here just in case you want to stop by and ask some questions so should I but the evenings are not good for you you will not stop by okay okay then you can call me okay so in chapter 11 we talked about um, Solving equations that are quadratic in form with a substitution. Uh, we talked about graphing a parabola. Mm -hmm. We talked about word problems that had parabola that, that had quadratic functions in them with a the vertex, mm -hmm. negative b over 2a, comma f of that. And we talked about factoring again and then uh, completing the square quadratic formula. And solving inequalities with that little chart with the signs, positive and negative. Yeah. So which one do you think we should practice right now from chapter 11? Perfect. So let's look at an inequality. Uh, something like this. I'm going to make one up. x squared minus 4. Uh, negative x squared plus 1. Uh, x less than or equal to 0. Well, what do I have to do first uh, is factor this. I'm going to put x in front. Factor this into x plus 2 and x minus 2. And this one I don't like. I will rearrange it like we always do. I will put this negative sign in front. And I will factor it now into x minus 1 and x plus 1 less than or equal to 0. And now I'm ready for the chart. I can use the chart because this is a product, and this is 0. So the first factor is negative x. Second factor is x plus 2, then x minus 2, then x minus 1, then x plus 1. And I don't have enough room for that whole thing. I'm going to say product. The whole thing. Mm -hmm. So each and every um, line or each and every quantity has to have a zero somewhere. And I have to put them in the, in the correct order, ascending order. So this one is zero. For this one is negative two. For this one is two. For this one is one. And for this one is negative one. So I will have to start with negative two, then continue with negative one, then with zero, then with one, and then with two. They are now in correct order, ascending order. This one has a zero here. This one a zero here. This one a zero here. This one a zero here. And finally, this one has a zero here. Of course, at all these x values, um, the product will be zero. 
This is the only one with a reversed sign. Everything else has the same sign, the same order of signs. Is this clear? Yeah. Because they are linear functions, and all of them will look like this, except negative x, it will look like this. So positive, zero, negative. Perfect. And now I count. One, two, three, four negatives. One, two, three negatives. Mm, two negatives. Three negatives. Two negatives. And one negative. And the question was this. Uh, well, I know that only negative is less than or equal to zero. So I have to choose this. I have to choose this. And I have to choose this. So therefore, I would say x in the interval. And with, I will include the zero. Bracket, negative 2, negative 1, union. 0, 1, union. 2, to infinity. Okay, so um, one more time, chapter 11 has more problems with um, the vertex and the quadratic function. Uh, solving equations, taking square roots, completing the square, quadratic formula, graphing, and the inequalities. Uh, a word problem? Yeah. Very good. So I'm looking for a word problem. The Utah Ski Club sells calendars to raise money. The profit P in cents, so this is 58, on page 704. Uh, P in cents from selling X calendars, so X. Okay. Uh, it's given by the equation P of X equals 360x minus x squared. Find how many calendars must be sold to maximize profit. And part B, find the maximum profit. Find how many calendars should they sell to maximize their profit. And then find the maximum profit. What type of function is it? Yes, quadratic. So does it have a maximum? It has a maximum because the leading coefficient is negative. And the maximum is determined with negative b over 2a, which is negative. b is 360 divided by 2, with negative, of course. So I have 180 calendars. The answer must be positive, right? So negative b over 2 times a. Negative 180, huh, right? 2 times a, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and the formula has negative oh, in front. Yes. That's okay. So now in order to find the maximum profit, I will find p of 180, which is negative 180 squared plus 360 times 180, and this will be in cents. So let's plug it in. Okay, negative 180 squared, and then plus 360 multiplied by 180, and I got 32,400 uh, cents. Because it says, let me make sure, the profit in cents. Find the maximum profit.
they probably made a mistake. Uh, they probably meant dollars. I think it makes no sense. Yeah, but that's what it says. Very good. Anything else from chapter 11, or can we go back to 10? Back to 10. We're going backwards. So here's what we studied in chapter 10. Um, how to multiply and divide and simplify radicals. How to rationalize denominators and numerators if that's the requirement. Um, how to solve radical equations. Uh, how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide complex numbers. Uh, we also talked about powers of I. Um, finding the distance and the midpoint if we're given two points. That's it. I use the absolute value if I'm told that x can be any real number and I'm trying to simplify a radical if, and I'm told x can be any real number. Uh, we learned how to graph the square root of x or the cube and the cube root of x. What would you like uh, to look at first? Rational equation, solve a rational equation, or? Yeah, but with the, you have to simplify because they So rationalize? Yeah. Okay, very good. So we want to rationalize the denominator. Okay, uh, let's look at um, x the square root of 2 minus 3 the square root of y over the square root of 2 minus 3 the square root of y. I would like to simplify this 3y with 3, 3 square root of y with 3 square root of y. Can I do that? No, chapter 7 will not allow me to. I can, they have to be factors. Good. So now I'm asked, let's say, to rationalize the numerator. This time for this problem, rationalize it. Uh, yes, it's the, comp the conjugate. So we have x the square root of 2 plus 3 the square root of y. x the square root of 2 plus 3 the square root of y. Good. So then, this times this. X times X is X squared, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. So this is 2X squared minus, and I know the formula, right, from the binomials. A minus B times A plus B will be A squared minus B squared. Why are we multiplying the numerator for X squared? We are rationalizing the numerator in this problem. So this is A minus B, and this is A plus B. Oh, so yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter what I start. I, have, I haven't finished. No, so. because I always, I always start it from the denominator. That's, that's fine, but this time the requirement was to rationalize the numerator. Oh, okay. But it doesn't matter. You can start anywhere. Okay. You want to start with the denominator, we can start no, with no, the denominator. No, 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 no. I, just, I, I was confused because I thought that you So A minus B times A plus B. A squared is this, minus B squared, which is 9Y. And I'm done with the top. Now here at the bottom I have to distribute. This times this is 2X. This times this is positive 3, the square root of 2Y. This times this is negative 3X, the square root of 2Y. And this times this will be negative 9Y. And there is nothing I can do here. Any questions on that? What about the distance formula, the Pythagorean th theorem, and the midpoint? Okay, which one? The square root of x2 minus x1, everything squared, plus y2 minus y1, everything squared. So let's choose two or the pairs. Any two or the pairs you can think of. Perfect. 
So this is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. And let's say I'm asked to find the midpoint. I will add the x's, I get 7 divided by 2. I will add the y's, I get 5 divided by 2. And that's the midpoint. But now for the uh, distance formula, yes, is the square root. I write the formula as x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And from here I have d equals the square root of x2 minus x1. So this is x, I'm sorry, this is 4, I meant to write. And this is 3, and this is 7, and this is negative 2. 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 squared is 1, plus. 7 minus minus 2 is 9, 9 squared will be 81. So then d equals the square root of 82. And you cannot simplify um, that radical because it's 2 times 41. And that's the distance formula and the midpoint. Do we need to review the, quadratic form the uh, uh, Pythagorean theorem? Yes? Okay, very good. So let's say we have, we are given 40 feet here, 60 feet here. We want to find x. What should I write? The formula is uh, x squared plus 40 squared. Exactly. x squared plus 40 squared equals 60 squared. So then x squared will be 60 squared minus 40 squared. So I will, so this is what I like to do because we know the formula a squared minus b squared, 60 minus 40, 60 plus 40. I don't need to do this because I can use the graphing calculator, but it's much easier. 20 and this is 100, so I know it's 2,000. And now I take the square root. I should write plus or minus uh, the square root of 2,000. However, I will say only plus because it's a distance. So x equals, I have uh, 2,000, if I want to give the exact simplified form, so this will be 20 times 100, and this will be 10. But here we have 4 and 5. So 10 times 2, 20, the square root of 5. This is exact in feet. Now if we want an approximation, we'll put it in the graphing calculator and get the approximation. Okay, uh, radical equations here, any more simplification? Uh, a radical equation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's say 159. 1647. And we have the square root of 2x minus 1 plus 2 equals x. Okay, so how do I solve such an equation? I know it's a radical equation because it has a radical in it. And, um, yes, exactly. I have the square root of 2x minus 1 equals x minus 2. And then I will square both sides. And then the left-hand side is 2x minus 1. But very carefully, we talked about this from the very beginning of the class. How many terms will I write on the right hand side? Three terms, very good. So this is x squared minus 2 times 4x and plus 4. Now I move everything to the one side and because I have to set it equal to 0. So when I move 2x here, I get negative 6x. When I add 1 to both sides, I get 5. If I know now that if I can factor it in 20 seconds, then I would use a quadratic formula, mm -hmm. which we did not know in chapter 11. So how do I factor this quickly? What is this for? I have to go back and check both solutions. So I'm, I'm checking 1. I know 1 is not going to work because this is the square root is always a positive number. A positive number plus 2 can never equal 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 2 is not 1. So I will say absolutely not. So now I'm going to check 
5. And when I check 5, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 minus 1 is 9, the square of 9 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, and I will say yes, only 2x equals 5. Very good. Um, what about this? The square root of x minus 3, everything squared. Mike, how was it? It was pretty good. There what? was one. One one that I could not do at all. Other, other than that, I'm sure. I was able to at least give a shot to everyone. Very good. Good. So, um, how do I square this? How many terms do I get? Yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. Perfect. Uh, anything else you think from this chapter? Please redo all problems from all tests. All tests and solutions are there. Redo them three or four times before you take the test. Okay. Um, another question. That um, my labs plus that login thing, the homework on that, is that two or is that, are you still doing that? Or? Um, I would like it to be done by this weekend so I can put the grades in. Okay. How much is it going to be a grade for that? It's 5%, it's no worries. No. Uh, uh, and just want to remind you about the student opinion forms if you didn't. Oh. I did it. I did it on my question. So please, please, uh, if you can. And that's your 5%. Okay. Anything else from chapter 11? I'm sorry, from chapter 10. Okay, let's go back to chapter 9. Let me tell you what we covered in chapter 9. In chapter 9, we looked at inequalities, compound inequalities, absolute value inequalities, um, absolute value equations, and then that graphing with sh and shading, graphing uh, and solving um, uh, inequalities with two variables, linear inequalities, systems of linear inequalities in two variables. So please tell me what uh, would you like to start with on chapter? The absolute value. The absolute value uh, equation, inequality. Um, okay, so let's start with absolute value inequalities. I'm looking at the end of chapter 9. And um, let's look at uh, 26 on page 582. And that is the absolute value 5x minus 3 greater than 2. And of course, there is a second option with number 24 on the same page with the absolute value of 6x minus 5 less than or equal to 5. These are two different situations, and they will be treated differently. So, any suggestions on the first step? Or what would you do for the first one? You cannot set it equal because this is an inequality and that will be a mistake. So from here I have two options. I have 5x minus 3 greater than 2 or 5x minus 3 less than negative 2. Right. Okay. So we cannot change this into any... Okay. Perfect. So then I add here 3. So I get 5x greater than 6, x greater than 6 fifths. Here I add 3, so I get 5x less than 1, x less than 1 fifth. So the interval notation is x in the interval. This is from negative infinity to 1 fifth. 3 plus 2 Oh, oh I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I have no idea. Thank you so much. So negative infinity to 1 fifth. Union 1 to infinity. Is this clear? Now this one is easier because this one is a chain. Yes, less than or equal to 6x minus 5, less than or equal to 5. 
As you notice here, there is no overlapping. This is the outside, and this is the inside. Okay, I have to add 5 to all three sides, so 0 less than or equal to 6x less than or equal to 11. I can, I can add today. And I divide everything by 6, so 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 5 divided by 3. So now the interval notation is 0, 5 thirds x in this interval. Uh, anything else for chapter th chapter nine? Uh, so we had uh, compound inequalities, which one of them is this, with the and and or. Mm -hmm. uh, then we had absolute value equations. We had these types of inequalities and graphing of systems of linear inequalities in two variables. Okay, very good. So let's take a look. So here's one example. Let's look at 51 on page 583. 51, 51. So negative 3x plus 2y uh, greater than negative 1 and y less than negative 2. Here, yes, I have to, I'm not changing anything, but here I have to write negative 3x plus 2y equals negative 1 because I'm graphing the equation first, not because I'm changing the problem. Perfect. So I will say when x is 0, y is negative 1 half. So I will have to plot 0, negative 1 half. When y is 0, then I have x equals 1 third. So then 1 third comma 0. So I graph that. So 0, negative 1 half, I'm going to say it's here. And 1 third, 0, I'm going to say it's here. Uh, it's not a solid line because the inequality does not have the equal symbol. So it will be a dashed line. Yes, yes. So this is only the equation. I did not graph the inequality. On the line, you cannot write the inequality. OK, so now I will choose 0, 0. So I'm checking this territory. See if this, this territory works. So I plug in 0 and 0. And I get that 0 is greater than negative 1, which is true. So I will have to shade in the area where the point that I checked with comes from. So this is now negative 3x plus 2y greater than negative 1. Everything we see in pink, however, not points on the line. Points on the line are not part of the solution. Why? Because there is no equal symbol here. Now I will repeat with this for the second one, but that is much easier because I only have y equals negative 2. And I know that y equals negative 2 is a horizontal line, not solid as well. y equals negative 2. And now I have to shade in either above or below. So it says y less than negative 2. Do I shade above or below? And for this problem, for this um, inequality, I, I cannot use a, uh, a point. There is no need also. So will I shade the above or the below? Of course. So I will shade below. Y less than negative 2. And now I have to intersect pink and red. And they overlap right here. Not points on this line. Not points, not points on this line. But everything in between. And this. A solution to that where I see blue but not points on the line any questions 
Anything else from chapter 9? Okay, let's go back to chapter 11. In chapter 11, we talked about functions. We talked about domain and range. We talked about um, finding the equation of a line given two points, answering questions on, in a word problem with that. Um, we're finding the equation of a line that is perpendicular to another line. Finding the equation of a line that is uh, parallel to another line. Um, graphing piecewise defined functions. There is no secret one function like that will be on the uh, undefined. Okay. Okay. Um, And relationships among variables, direct, inverse, and joint. Okay. Okay. So what do we? So what do we start with? What would you like to start with? Yes. Very good. <coughs> Bless you. So let me look at a problem here. Uh, we're given a point negative one comma two. And the line is perpendicular to 3x minus y equals 4. So this is problem 11 on page 549. So we're asked to find um, the equation of a line knowing two things about it. So this is the line I don't have. But I know two things about it. And what are those two things? One is that it passes through this point, so I don't know, somewhere on the line. I have negative 1 comma 2. And I also know that this line, the red line, is perpendicular to this one, which is 3x minus y equals 4. Perpendicular means for 90 degree angles. So now what do I do? I have a point, and the point is not the y-intercept, so immediately I think of y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, where x1 is negative 1 and y1 is 2. However, if I can find a way to find the slope, I will not be able to find the equation of this line. So what do I do to find the slope of the line? Very good point, yes. Yeah. I have to take this equation and solve it for y first. So negative y equals negative 3x plus 4. I will multiply both sides by negative 1 to get this. And now I know the slope that I will call m1. So what is a slope? Good. Because of that, I will easily identify the slope m2 of the red line. Third. Negative one third. Yes, the multi the negative multiplicative inverse. So now I have everything I need. I have the point. I have the slope. So now I can find the equation. So from here I continue with y minus two equals negative one third x plus one minus minus one x minus minus one. I distribute negative one third, and of course I have to bring a two to the other side. So then I know that the least common denominator here is 3, negative 1 plus 6, negative 1 plus 6. So y equals negative 1 third x plus 5 thirds. What does this represent? Is the equation of the red line. The equation of the line um, passing through negative 1 comma 2 and perpendicular to the given line. Good. So one more time, the topics here are uh, what we just did. And if what if the lines were parallel? It's easy because the, slope, the, same slope. the slopes will be the same. Very good. So what we, if... We will do the same formula. Exactly. Exactly. Um, 
So here also we looked at um, war problems. We were given two points. We were asked to find the equation of the line, and we were asked other questions. Uh, we were asked to graph a piecewise defined function. Piecewise defined function. Yes. So on page 548, uh, let's look at 40, let's look at 56. So 56, uh, g of x equals 4x minus 3 for x less than or equal to 1 and 2x for x greater than 1. What is the first thing I need to do when I graph? When I'm asked, yes. Mandatory the domain is the first step. So I look at this and I will rewrite it as negative infinity to 1. I look at this and I will rewrite it as 1 comma infinity. And now I can tell for sure what the domain is for function g. It's all real numbers, right? Because negative infinity to 1, 1, and then from 1 to infinity. Very good. So negative infinity to infinity. Uh, 1 must be in the chart because I will be using these symbols to the left and this symbol to the right. And they are touching. There is no empty space in there. That's important. Okay, which function will I use for this territory and which function will I use for this territory? Although I have them in front of me, I'd rather write them though. So this is 4x minus 3 and this is 2x. Very good. So what do I do next? Next I have to find some x values in order to, to do what? To find some corresponding y values to graph. Very good. Okay, so if I use negative 1, negative 1 times 4 minus 3 is negative 7. If I plug, yes, negative 3. And if I plug in 1, I get perfect. Done with that side. If I plug in 1, I get 2. If I plug in 2, I get, that's it, done with that side as well. So now let's plot. So, negative 1, negative 7. 0, negative 3. Uh, 1, comma 1. Full point. Finish with the left branch. I cannot extend it anywhere else but to the left. Now, in the middle, have 1, comma 2. It's an open point, and then 2 comma 2, I'm sorry, 2 comma 4, which is a full point. Can anyone identify the range of this function for us? With a bracket, union, no. Very good, infinity, very good. 